So today we've got something a bit different. Um, this is a USA Trains GP9. Um, it's in gauge one, um, running uh, yeah, running on uh, G scale track or G gauge track or gauge one track. Um, and uh, yeah, this is uh, one of the biggest installs I've done for DCC. I've done quite a number of uh, battery conversions for um, a large scale, which you might see on my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, but this is the first DCC install, um, and um, yeah, it's come out quite good. I'm pretty happy with where we've got to. Uh, it was a lot more work than I expected. The way these GP9s are set up, um, they're actual the, the USA Trains locos and many other uh, manufacturers' locos. They're not really DCC ready. If anything, they're ready for other um, control methods like um, battery power and radio control or. Uh, air wire and and there are um, DCC um, uh, fittings that can go into them um, but this one was uh, one done uh, to install the lock sound XL so the lock sound XL is actually a fairly small decoder um, it just sits in here this is the um, screw terminal version that you can see here so it's got two sets of screw terminals uh, at either end um, and uh, what I've done is got uh, the existing electronics that were in there. There were two lots of electronics um, that needed to be removed. Uh, one is the lighting board which you see here and there's one of these at each end. So you've got um, basically uh, headlight uh, bulbs here uh, which are incandescent bulbs. Um, then you've got uh, two other incandescent bulbs to do the number boards and these two LEDs up the top here. They're all controlled and I think they run at about three volts. I've measured them at uh, through these um, uh, these diodes that you see here uh, and these diodes themselves um, control obviously um, constant lighting in each direction etc and the direction to be set. Um, the trouble is that's not very compatible with DCC unless you do a fair bit of work. Uh, so I remove them. The other thing is the current draw out of these incandescent bulbs is quite high. It's in the order of probably two to 300 milliamps per bulb. Uh, and so if you had all four of them, you're nearly drawing an amp, which is a fair whack. Now the lock sound XL uh, decoders, if I, uh, I'll just uh, zoom in and uh, just hold it. So I'm just zooming in on the lock sound XL decoder, um, which is this one here. The board next to it is actually a board for um, one set of the smoke units. It's got two lots of smoke units in it. And I've reused a switchboard here um, so that um, the customer can turn the smoke unit on or off manually as well as uh, controlling it via a function key. The reason I do that is um, while these boards are designed to protect the filaments, um, it might be that uh, you forget to um, uh, turn off the smoke it runs dry, uh, you forget the function key, and you keep running it and you'll burn out the filaments. But if you just turn that switch off, everything's isolated uh, and you're ready to go. So um, that's why it's wired up that way. So uh, what I'll show you now is how I've wired it all together. And we'll zoom in on one end just so I can show you the lighting, etc. In order to do the lighting uh, on these locos, basically you, if you want to control them independently, what you need to do is set up uh, LEDs, well I've used LEDs um, because I want to minimise the current draw, and what I've got is LEDs for headlights, LEDs for number boards, and LEDs for classification lights. Now in this loco I've wired up classification lights for white going forward and red in reverse. And you need a lead each side, um, it's pretty difficult to just use one lead to do both class lights. So I've used a lead each side and two leads each side in effect, uh, one white and one red, uh, and that's why there's so many wires here. Each wire is actually uh, labelled, so here we've got um, the headlight rear, um, we've got um, another one which I think is uh, the class lights red, uh, and so on. And I've labelled all of those and used the same wire throughout just to keep it consistent and because I couldn't find enough different coloured uh, wires um, to keep in with the DCC code. Okay, we're about ready to go here. I'll kick it over and we'll see how things go. I'm 
turn the lights on. Number boards. Just set up for a normal horn now. Um, you can change that in the settings quite easily. We'll reverse it and take it away. Just try it again. I've um, moved it up the other end of the track, and uh, I've turned the lights down a little bit, the uh, video lights, so we can see the, the lighting a little bit better. So at the moment, the headlights on in the reverse direction. The class lights are showing red on the rear, but you can't really see them too well. They show up all right when you look at them directly, but the red LEDs are a bit low. Anyway, we'll reverse it. Headlight comes on, class lights are on, number boards stay lit no matter which way, and away we go. Should probably put the bell on because we're in a shunt mode. Pretty happy with that. It's turned out really well. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. It's only going to be a fairly short one, uh, but I uh, just wanted to show the variety of installs you can do in DCC, and um, I think uh, I could be quite easily converted to running one of those, even though it's not Steam. So thanks for watching.